the time isn't a time to hang up those wheels and go into hibernation. Oh no, it's a great time of year to go out and get the base miles into those legs, albeit at a slightly slower pace. Although the weather usually takes a turn for the worse and it's very important to keep that motivation nice and high. That's right, so a great way of keeping morale high on cold and wet days like we're having today is to find a great group of friends so it doesn't feel like you're out there on your own battling the elements. But before you go out and race your mates, there's a few tips that will help you to keep your group riding flowing nicely despite other things like the traffic, other obstacles and bad terrain. And hopefully by the end of it, we'll still be mates. So to demonstrate exemplary group riding skills, we've got one of the largest ever cycling weekly presenter lineups. We'll be showing you our best tips on a Ribble CGR, Cannondale Synapse, BNC Road Machine and a Canyon Endurace. And we've got some handy navigational help from our friends at Kamut. But before we head off, make sure you guys at home click on the notification bell to see all the latest and greatest content from the Cycling Weekly YouTube channel. Are you guys ready to ride our bikes? Yeah, I think so. Let's go and do it. Before you even start your ride, it's important that at least a few of you know exactly the route that you're going to take. As sometimes when you're actually on the ride itself, communication can break down and it's easy for some people to get lost, whether it being on a climb or in busy towns. With computer technology being so good these days, you can take GPS devices like Garmin's and apps like Kamut and plan routes and then share it easily amongst the people you're going riding with. That way everybody knows roughly how far they're going to ride, how many climbs there are, and more importantly, where that all important cafe stop is gonna be. When riding in a group, communication is key, especially in a larger group, because the riders at the back can't necessarily see what obstacles lie ahead. So the riders at the front need to communicate those obstacles backwards to the group. Yes, you can shout until your heart's content, but sometimes those commands are inaudible, especially if the riders are six or seven riders back. So, hand signals are key, and here are some of the key signals you need to give to warn riders ahead. The first set of signals is just pointing. Point obstacles out, usually potholes. What you want to do is point down towards where the pothole is going to be. Those riders at the back then know if they need to move slightly left or slightly right to move out of the way. The second signal is similar to pointing out potholes in the road, but it's a swift action behind your back to point out any obstacles that lie either on the left-hand side or the right-hand side of the road. So if there's an obstacle on the left-hand side, use your left hand to point on your back to the right to show that the group needs to move out and go around either a parked car, a horse, or a walker in the road. The third signal is simply slowing down, just a, a light pat on the head to slow and warn the riders behind that you are going to slow gradually. If you shout stop in this scenario or brake, people can tend to just slam their brakes on and that can cause a crash. And finally, the last set of hand signals is simply directional. Which way do you intend to turn, right or left? You've got to make sure they're in line with your shoulders, so you're clearly not pointing out a hole or an obstacle. You're telling other road users which way you're going. Ribble's CGR says what it does on the tin. It's the Preston-based brand's cross, gravel and road bike. This machine is all about versatility, which makes it perfect for winter riding. Ribble offers the chassis constructed from aluminium, titanium or steel. In this case, we went for the entry-level alloy creation. It's a fairly hefty machine that you can trust on routy trails, though it has been slimmed down when compared to its former iteration. The seat stays especially are now slimmer and dropped for extra compliance. As you'd expect, it's a disc brake specific bike with through axles for rigidity, even when slamming on for that unexpected squirrel. And the BB is threaded, so you shouldn't be clunking your way around the lanes when it's on its way out. The geometry is very relaxed with a short reach and high head tube, lending towards stability off-road, though there's plenty of room to drop it and get it a bit more aggressive if you want to. There's also plenty of mounting for bike packing and mud guards with clearance for proper muddy days out. If 
you've never been on the receiving end of another rider's snot, it's fair to say it's one of the worst experiences that you can have on a bike. So if you do need to clean your nose or spit, please move out of the line, give some warning to the people behind you and do it under your elbow so it doesn't go into their face. Running a set of mudguards is a really big part of fitting in with the winter riding etiquette within a group. Most of the guys here are running SKS mudguards. They just clip on, should be really easy. I'm told it can help prevent a lot of the kind of crud from the road from eroding parts of your bike. And also, apparently, it's better for your ride buddies behind. But, I mean, personally, it's, it's never really been a problem. Guys? The Endurace is arguably one of the most lively endurance style bikes on the market. It aims to be the perfect companion on those long winter rides. This is the CF SL 7.0 version and that means you get a very dependable and value for money Shimano 105 hydraulic group set, perfect for those long winter miles. This is also the carbon fibre super light version, so gone are the days you need to lug around a hefty winter machine with Canyon claiming this bike in a medium weighs in at 8.39 kg. The Endurace has been a proven winner out on the road during testing. Just down to the German brand Sport Geometry that mixes speed, comfort and control. It truly offers a playful ride which will keep you enjoying what sometimes can be arduous conditions during the winter. Part of making a group ride enjoyable in the winter is to keep the pace nice and steady. And that means no half wheeling at all. Michelle, come on, that's better. So it also means no sudden movements, sudden braking, or sudden accelerations. You can kind of get away with a few in a small group like this, but in a big group, those are gonna have big consequences for the guys at the back. Also, when it comes to the climbs, you need to keep that tempo as steady as possible, because some people will be on their limits. And when it comes to going back down the hills, make sure you carry on pedaling, because otherwise the guys behind you, they're going to be braking constantly. One way to ensure that you're never invited out on a group ride again is skipping turns. It's so efficient and so effective sitting in the draft of a group that you can save so much energy. Sitting behind one rider can save you about 30%. Imagine sitting behind five. So, you always have that one person in the group that's a little snake, skips their turns throughout the day and they save all that energy up just to beat you in the sprint at the end. But if everyone does their turn and everyone looks after each other, however short that turn is, everyone gets a fair share at the sprint at the end of the ride. But, uh, hey, hey guys, guys. Oh man. The BMC Road Machine 021 is designed to deliver a very happy training experience. Whether that's a long club ride or a fast paced chain gang, the BMC Road Machine's carbon fibre frame uses the brand's tuned compliance concept technology. This is designed to be stiff and sporty, but also extremely compliant and comfortable, like you're riding Swiss roads wherever you go. I truly mean it when I say that the BMC Road Machine's frame is one of the best looking I've had the privilege to ride. The frame's angular and quite frankly stunning design is more than a subtle nod to aerodynamics. Its sharp lines help give quite the advantage over your training partners should things get a little heated. Elsewhere, 28mm Vittoria tyres and a D-shaped seat post help add a touch more comfort for those especially long rides in the saddle. Alerting your riding group to cars on the road is absolutely crucial, but there's often a lot of confusion about which words to say. Car up and car down are quite confusing because some people think their down is their up and their up is their down. So we just think it'd be a lot more simple to say car front and car back. Car up! Oh, there's no car! Most of us like to have a go at a Strava segment, 
or have a go at contesting a town side sprint. However, don't sacrifice the cohesion of a group ride at the altar of your own ego. If it's a no drop ride, make sure it stays that way. Some clubs like to head out steady to the cafe stop and then smash it on the way back when everyone knows where they're going. Listen out for mechanicals. Guys, I think I've got a punch up. I don't think there are any more superlatives that can be used when it comes to Cannondale's legendary Synapse Endurance Bike. A ride that provides the power delivery of an uppercut from a prize fighter, albeit one wrapped up in the comfort of a feather duvet, this Synapse Carbon Disc Dura Ace is the epitome of the ideal winter bike. The Synapse delivers smoothness in abundance thanks to the Cannondale's Save system. For those not familiar, this is comprised of a carbon layup specific for delivering compliance through the seat stays, fork legs and seat post. Perfect for those grizzled winter roads. The group set on this model is provided by Shimano's flagship Durace with flat mount disc brakes as standard. Fulcrum wheels finish the ride with larger volume Vittoria tyres aiding to soak up the road buzz. All in all, this is a bike that's built for many a comfortable mile. Candel's recent success in the alternative calendar with EF Education First is real testament to how suited these bikes are to the needs of riders like you or I, showing their supreme ability in a non-professional capacity. Simon, can I borrow a pump, please? Uh, I don't have a pump, mate. You're, you're the pump guy, you always bring the pump. Yeah, forgot. Oh. It might seem silly to have everybody carrying their own pump, spare tubes and tools, but it happens more often than not, and especially on a winter ride where punches can be more prevalent. Just complaining that nobody's carrying a pump isn't gonna inflate your tire. So making sure that everybody is self-sufficient and able to fix their own bike is gonna help your winter ride carry on smoothly. good time on our admittedly not very wet and windy winter ride if it actually rains I will bring my cars guys yeah that is key for those wet winter rides and if you guys at home have got any great group riding top tips for us or our audience please do leave them in the comments section below don't forget to like and subscribe our cycling weekly YouTube channel as well and whilst you're there click the notification bell to make sure you see all of our latest releases as they arrive on the channel but until next time we'll see you then